It's prime. This will be the dome and the ladies of justice. This is the gold finish that we're going to put on it. Um, it's a gold fleck paint that we found out in Utah that we like. It'll have a clear coat over it. The old tower was dirty copper. This is what was on the statues. And this is, uh, frankly, when you come into Newark from a distance and that sun hits that gold dome and those statues, it's gonna knock your socks off. Take a look at it. about every 30 inches, uh, which is what there were originally. So the building from the ground will still look the exact same. Um, when we get the sca well, scaffolding all comes down, we know we just know somebody's gonna stand on the ground and look up and say, I didn't do anything, it looks the same. And, and, that'll, and that'll be a compliment. That, that's a compliment that we're really looking forward to, to hearing. Um, so again, this is a galvanized sheet metal facade that was painted to kind of emulate the same look of the stone below it. Uh, so phase one starts at about right here, and we're working from there up. So this is kind of the, the bottom of what we're working to. Gables installed on it as well. One of the things that, that I like to mention about these gables was as we started opening them up, the, the, the sheet metal was in really bad shape. <laughs> and the reason was the pigeons were actually getting above this and busting apart the metal and getting inside of these gables where they could have like a condominium. And we took a dumpster of bird droppings. The acid from the bird droppings was actually eating the metal. And from the outside, you could see it starting to rust and you cut the rust spot out, put a, put a patch in, and then a few years later, the rust would eat right past that patch because it was being eaten from the inside out. And so scraping and preening it was really a, a lost cause. We had to uh, take out, like I said, almost a dumpster of, of bird droppings, and, and that is a, a health hazard. If anybody knows anything about pigeons, it, it's a health hazard. So guys had to be fully suited up, full face shields, and basically bring a big shot vac in and shot back all the bird droppings out just to remove the old rotten metal. So as we're putting this back, we're trying to think of, of ways to build it better. We look at how it failed and, and what we can do to, to rebuild it correctly. So we put a plywood structure above us, and as we, as we go up, you'll see the landing. So if a bird would start pecking, it had to go through the metal, and then it had to go through all the plywood to even get in there. We also built little bird boxes in each corner to try to get the birds out of there so they wouldn't have a nice little nesting area to lock into. Somewhere around here, and I'm not sure where, I, I haven't seen it yet today, and it might be covered by plastic, H.H. Meyer, who designed the building originally, his initials are carved into one of these stones around here. Seriously? I'm serious. Uh, you got a picture of it? I, I think I do, but again, I, I think it's covered by plastic right now. But when, when that gets uncovered, I want a picture of it. Oh, Absolutely. Because yes. he, uh, he designed a number of courthouses Correct. around Ohio. There's one over in the town of Sydney in Shelby County. Yep. It's almost identical to this courthouse. It's slightly bigger. It was built 10 years later. He almost replicated this courthouse over in the city of Sydney, Ohio. If you go look at it, you'll think you're in Licking County. Yeah. And they just got done restoring that one and putting new windows in that one.
be good shape compared fairly to Fairly decent shape compared to wow. yeah. Wow. Now, are, would they already be, um, they're already, you know, manufacturing those pieces Correct. up in Marion then? Right. And, okay. Yes, sir. And the good thing about painting some of it up there, too, is if we get a day out here where it's raining, the sure. painter can just go right up there, up and, there. They, and they have stuff ready for him to paint up there. That's great. So it kind of, you don't lose too much time. Right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, Nelson, I don't know if anybody has an obligation to have this or not, but I'm going to try to stop the video. Try again. And we made it back around to where we started. condition at that point to see what the, what the condition of it is and, and repair it as necessary then repaint the whole thing. Again, ply, put plywood underneath of this, give it extra stability and structure. So potentially that could get blasted and just maintain that 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 piece. That's there. The, that's the thought right right now. As okay. of right now, we're, we're our hope is to, to blast and remove all the paint. The metal appears to be in good shape underneath that. <laughs> And, the, and you'll see in the in the kind of the the, the crook of the um, the gable down there, you'll see the little bird box we built. We wanted to, to try to keep the pigeons from having a nice roosting spot. Yeah. The problem is, everything we do is just deterrent. I mean, you still got a 26 inch ledge there for them to land on. Um, but we've tried to keep them from getting back in those corners. So we, we wanted to come up with something that wouldn't change the look of the building uh, too much but also be a deterrent. So that was the thought process that went behind that. The, the tops of the chimneys, if you look down to the, to the left there, there's a chimney that, that gets another two foot. We're rebuilding those back up. Those were in really bad shape. In fact, somebody took steel strapping and just held some of the tops together with steel strapping. So we wanted to take those down so they weren't a safety hazard, but we didn't want to overload the scaffolding, uh, or point load the scaffolding, I should say. So we, we set them up on the roof. Uh, those, Yes, and those will go back on. Now this scaffolding has been uh, designed, engineered, uh, whatever you want to call it, to uh, withstand wind loading, the weight of the scaffold, the weight of people on it. We had a structural engineer design these 12-inch um, laminate beams, and we've actually sistered six of those together, bolted six of those together. Those are 54 feet long, uh, we brought them up here one at a time. That's probably how they're going to go back down. So, uh, but but the scaffolding was designed, engineered. Once we uh, completed the erection, we brought a second a second pair of eyes, another structural engineer. This the second gentleman was actually the one who designed the latest ride at Cedar Point, and was on his way back from a ribbon cutting. Stopped by here and came up and, and gave us a, a you know clean bill of health for that as well. So. Those original posts of what Lady Justice? We believe so. Website? We believe the original, correct. Really? The, the Ladies of Justice were taken down. Those are up in Marion. Uh, they have a, a thick coating of fiberglass product that was smeared over top of them. What we're trying to do is get down to the bare metal. We'd like to get back to that bare metal to get the paint to adhere to it uh, and see what kind of condition they're in. <laughs> the, the base of that, you'll see the, the sheet metal of that, those have already been fabricated up in Marion. Those will go back in once we start doing the roofing and, and right before the Lady of Justice. We didn't want to tear too many of those apart and try to keep the building dry as well. Wow. So again, the, the tower had, had galvanized sheet metal on it, had paint, had caulking. 
the metal was failing badly. The thought was, the original thought was, we'll come up, we'll, we'll blast the paint off, we'll scrape the caulking off, we'll repair the bad metal, we'll leave as much, you know, the thought was leave 70%, replace 30%. As we started stripping the paint and the caulking off, that was all that was holding the metal together. There was literally holes that you could put your fist through. Um, just there was levels that had seven layers of metal, just one right on top of each other, and the first four or five would be rusting, and then and the rust was already eaten through level, you know, six. And so um, the decision was made once we started removing the paint. It, it turned out to be more like a 70% replacement, and only you know 20 to 30% could be saved. At that point, it was, well, what does a full replacement entail? And uh, so we, they opted to go with the full replacement of the sheet metal, uh, rather than try to patchwork quilt this and try to save a few old pieces, just put it all back new. Uh, we did put additional structure in behind it, more wood, more support. Um, again, trying to think through every every uh, thing that has failed in the past and how we can try to mitigate that in the future. And this was all fabricated in Marion as well? Or? Correct. The majority of these pieces were fabricated in Marion. Each piece was measured, entered into a CAD program. The CAD program talked to the CNC cutter, and they also had their, their break, all these, pe all these rounded edges. If you look closely, each of these are broke uh, into a radius. And so their break is also hooked up to their computer as well. So each piece was measured, entered into the computer, uh, and then fabricated in Marion. And they bring the, the fabricated pieces out here, cut them and fit them and mount them onto the tower. And the substructure all, all the way up here is all brick then? The or? substructure is brick just to the top of this landing up above here, and then it turns into just structural steel. The, um, the, the, the brick you see behind here, there was always a window here. There was always brick behind it. It was just for looks to keep the tower looking symmetrical. It's not um, a chimney or anything. It's not a chimney. On the inside, they kind of have um, a, a diagonal masonry piece. The only thing we could figure is they thought maybe that would help you know, make the tower more rigid as it came up out. Hey, Nick, let me look and see if we can move a little sideways. Sure. Maybe everybody can get in sure. here. These guys can't see. Right. Nick, I apologize, you may have said this already. So what color will this be painted? Will it be the beige or the gold? This will be the beige. Okay. Yes. As we get up, I'll tell you where the gold's gonna start. It's right below the clock face level. Okay. So as we get up there, you'll be able to see where the where the gold will take off. Okay. And then the ladies of justice that are gonna be re restored will also be the gold color. The um the little mounts that you see down here that have been soldered down. Those are gonna be the lights. The lights you saw down in the trailer, the color changeable LEDs. We went through the, the thought process of how can we mount these lights to the building where it will last the longest and, and, and you know without penetrating the building and, and making it a, a potential leak. You know, we've thought about these down to the point of, of, of angling them where water can, can flow off this table and not be uh, obstructed. So that's what these little pedestals are? Yes. Okay. Those have wood inside of them. And so they, they mounted the wood down uh, seal that off, mounted the metal down, soldered that down, and then when we mount the light, we'll seal the little hole from the from the light fixture itself. But even, you know, everything we're thinking about is the, the longevity of this building. Um, you know, we've had years of people walking around this ledge, and this ledge, again, just had the little metal straps in there. And so you had people that were walking, and every time they stepped in between a strap, the metal would belly down. As the metal got stepped on enough, the water would puddle and, and, and deteriorate the metal. And again, this was the level that had the seven layers. So one level get, you know, one layer gets destroyed, let's put another layer, another layer. And then as you do that, the next piece doesn't get flashed in properly, it just gets turned up here and, and cocked in. And when Nick said years, we're at our 60, we're almost at 70 courthouse lighting. Yes. So there's almost 70 years of people. Wow. So as we put this back, as we put this back, we 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 beef this up. We put structural steel in here. We put plywood in here, where if somebody does have to get out here and change a light, they can. But then we're also thinking, let's put changeable color changeable lights where we don't have to have constant traffic up here. It'll be a minimal traffic, but it'll also be able to support the weight of someone out here. These guys are particularly. You got several members of the courthouse Christmas committee on this sure. tour. Sure. Sure. And. Uh, the, you can you can see that they've really thought through how we're going to mount these permanent lights up here, and that you know all the control cables and power cables will come through certain ports up here, 
so we don't take on any water. Once we mount all the lighting up here, leave it alone and go away. Right. I don't know, Jim. Are you going to miss coming up here and stringing the lights? <laughs> Not at all. I might be missing something. I don't recall Jim being up here. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. Think about it, back in the day they rang bells like this for their fires and things in town or to mark special occasions like at the end of the World War. They'd be up here ringing these bells. That's how they sent the word out to the community. They didn't have radios and stuff. That's how they sent out the word to the community. Something big was going on was ringing the bells downtown. It's a big deal. Yep. And then all of a sudden people quit ringing bells. No, Dan, Dan Paint here. We're still in the Dan Paint. Uh, the round windows are being fabricated up in Marion. Um, there was going to be a, an Akoya lumber, which is a very highly preserved lumber that will last a very long time. They'll be painted off site, but they'll be brought in and, and installed back in here. It would have been real easy not to do it completely. Look at the little crosses that were cut back in. It would have been very easy to put the metal back and just make that flat. But all those original little crosses were hand cut out and soldered in there as decorative pieces. You'll probably never see those from the ground. But because we could, with the, uh, the digital cutting, we put, the, put everything back. That's the way they made it. Was that? We've got weekly electric that's going to be mounting the lights and doing all the wiring. But the actual mounts that are being put now, we're, make, we're having mid-state so that the building stays so you don't know, have an electrician coming up and running wood screws in to galvanize sheet metal or we're putting two metals together that don't you know that he doesn't know anything about we're letting the restoration contractor say hey here's your pedestal you mount it right here so that it, that everything on the building stays watertight the last thing we wanted to do was spend millions of dollars to make the building watertight and have somebody come up and run screws in or not knowing what they were doing of interesting, everything looks nice and shiny. The first thing the painter does is come up and rough everything up and sand it. Yep. Because before they can get everything to adhere to this in the primer, they rough it up and prepare it. But maybe Nick could tell you, one of our concerns is we really don't want to be up here painting this every other year. They actually are paying somebody to test the adherence on every layer. Tell them how they do that. Yeah, they have a, uh, what's called a little small dolly. It's only about this big around, a little metal piece. They actually epoxy glue that down to a piece of sheet metal, and then they have a, a, a device that goes over top of it, and it starts pulling on it, and it tells you how many hundreds of PSI it takes to remove that piece from the metal. 
we were at about 7,800 psi on our test. On our you ever see somebody paint something and not prepare the surface and the paint comes right off about the time they do it? We really didn't want that to happen. He's got another device that comes in and measures. What, they're, what they do is they, they actually take a sander and, and rough that metal. So he has a device that comes through and measures how much angular profile they put into the, into the metal because the paint has got to go in and, and bite to adhere to that sheet metal. So these, these clock surrounds were fabricated into two pieces up in Marion, all wood substructure behind it. They fabricated the whole thing while they had a nice controlled setting there at their shop. Then, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? Last week. Last week. Last week. They flew those up here uh, in, in halves, brought them into the scaffold, set them in place, and then put them back together, and they're going to solder everything in. Um, the, the faces, the actual numbers, the Roman numeral rings, um, we took those off, took them back to Marion. We're shot blasting those down to the bare cast iron. I'm going to repaint those all with new paint. Mm. And those are original, the Roman numerals mm -hmm. made out of iron, wrought iron you know, around it, all being restored. Those are actually come off in 10 minute sections. So when we first looked at it, it was like, well, this is one giant, you know, right. thousand pound ring, but it actually came off in sections. Uh, and, and Commissioner Flowers, by the way, wants me to put one back incorrectly, see if anybody had been there. <laughs> <laughs> 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Yeah, he, he thinks people don't know the new Roman numerals anymore. He, he wants to see if anybody catches that. You may be right. <laughs> I want to give you guys a quick thing. You see the, the clock housing, you see the guts for the county clocks behind there. The big rumor out in the Licking Valley region was that the commissioners allowed somebody to steal the clocks and that the clocks were missing. So you were all witnesses. The clock, all the clocks are still here. No one stole them. And uh, people, were, they were looking up here and they couldn't see the clocks. So the rumor started that somebody had absconded with the clocks at the courthouse. Well, they're here. The, the numerals are in Marion. The glass is in storage and the hands are in storage. The clocks will return. Tim, is this where you found those original? They were actually below here yeah. and stuck in the sides. They were down at the round window level, the original wooden clock hands. Yeah. So we grabbed those before anybody, you know, before any of the souvenir hunters. Before the souvenir hunters or the bargain hunters, we uh, we procured those and we put those in safekeeping. We will bring them out so people can see them. You should know that downstairs in the lower areas coming up through here. Nick could attest to this. People have been signing the walls of the tower probably since the turn of the century. Yeah. Um, there's names from 1923 during World War One. The people, as they've come up through the interior, have left their marks and signed. And we're not going to paint over all those. It's a, to be honest with you, it's a, almost a who's who of Newark through the years, with people putting their names and dates on the walls downstairs of the tower. Sort of like Kilroy. I was here. Uh -huh. It's kind of neat, really.